Welcome back to Diary of an Empath. Once again, I just want to thank all of my new subscribers. I've been getting all the messages and I'm just so happy that it's resonating with you. Make sure that you're rating and subscribing because it helps the podcast grow. Now, today I have a topic that I've been wanting to talk about for quite some time now. And the topic that I want to talk about today is, is dating dead? And I have a few special guests that I want to bring on the show to help me discuss this topic. My first guest is Donna Gift. She's known for her unique dating comedy reels on TikTok. She's also an entrepreneur who teaches individuals how to grow their social media. My second guest is Jay Marie Carrasco. She's a fitness model, a competitor, a business owner, and an entrepreneur. And last but not least, I also am bringing on Kenny Mulford. He is an author, a videographer, and of course, he's my engineer on this show. So you're not going to see him in the video. So for those of you that are watching on YouTube, you're not going to see Kenny in the video, even though we love his pretty face, but we don't yes. have enough cameras. <laughs> you will hear. You will hear. But, but you will hear him on the podcast because I think he's going to bring a unique perspective to the show from a male perspective. Okay. So Donna, I want to start with you. Is dating dead? What are your thoughts? Man, that's a, that's a tough one, honestly, because I feel like it, it is and it isn't, but is it a fucking unicorn? Kind of. <laughs> <laughs> it is. I feel like it is a unicorn. I I, I want to say like I have a positive outlook and I'm trying to maintain a positive outlook because, you know, the law of attraction, what you put out there is what you attract back. But I feel like I've been trying to fucking attract it for a long time. And I know my conversations, I've known Jane Marie for a while and she knows the conversations we've had. I feel like it is dead. I, I want to say that there's like the rare unicorns that are out there, but I have been dating. I've been single for six years and I just don't feel like this generation is the same when it comes to dating. It's absolutely not. I mean, so many things have changed. I, I feel like there's a huge difference in quality of men. Um, goodness, the dating apps do not help at all. Um, there's just too much selection out there, to be honest. So, Jamie, you've been married for a while, right? Yeah, 10 years. So I feel like. I don't know. I don't know if anything's changed within the time that you've been married, but back when you were single, do you feel like you had issues dating? Do you feel like men courted you? Um, there's definitely a lot more options as far as uh, getting to know people online now than there was when I started. <laughs> <laughs> you act like it was ancient times. I'm so old. <laughs> um, <laughs> and for those of you that can't see her, you I just want to slap her because she's like... <laughs> freaking j-lo right? no <laughs> um, i mean i'll take it listen but <laughs> you're, doing good. you're doing real good <laughs> um so when i started it was like my husband and i got to know each other through myspace but even then myspace girl top five <laughs> I remember MySpace. <laughs> but even then um it's because he knew he was um living in michigan and knew somebody that i was close to back then so he saw me on their feed and then was like, Oh, let me reach out. So even then it was like through friends, it wasn't just a random, like now people connect, you know, through, you know, through these apps, you can connect with a complete stranger. Mm -hmm. And, um, whereas back then it was like, what, what are your, you know, you go out, you go to work or you get introduced by friends. Yeah. It was more organic. And yeah. so for me, mm -hmm. that's my issue too, is because I prefer somebody who I can just meet organically. Mm -hmm. I don't want to go on apps, but unfortunately, I'm not going to lie. I usually have my dating methods through apps because I don't date people in the gym and I have have once or twice and that was a toxic and gross situation. What do you eat? What do you eat? So I, it's not like I'm going to meet someone at the public supermarket. Right. I don't really go out. And nine times out of 10, I'm with my kid or I'm running my business. So I resort to online dating and my thumb has arthritis from swiping left. <laughs> like, <laughs> what do you use for dating? Do you use apps? Um, so I actually had to take a bit of a sabbatical. So I deleted all my apps. I recently, I don't know if it was like, because I knew that this podcast was coming. I was like, let me just re-download Hinge just to see what is going on in the world. 
But, um, you know, it has been my main source of dating, I guess, is apps um, or Instagram. Um, some people message me on Instagram. So I guess it's kind of, um, yeah. Gotta so Instagram. I was dating somebody and I, I, I'm not going to lie. I met him through Instagram. But even that situation, I was ghosted recently. And so for those of you that listened to my last episode on ghosting, I didn't really go into super details about the story, but I met somebody who one I day. Was, one day will tell the whole story, <laughs> but I was, juicy. it is really, really juicy. <laughs> it is. And I'm, I'm, I, part of me wants to tell the story and another part of me is like, I'll don't tell it. Don't. <laughs> <laughs> another part of me is like, don't be petty. Don't be that girl. But I really was into this guy and I thought he was too. And then it's just like, poof, he went missing. And I think it has to do with another girl. He was in the entertainment industry. Who fucking knows? But I I do. (laughs) (laughs) She wants me to tell the story. Please pick me, pick me. (laughs) You know, all I'll say is that, you know, he, he missed out. He's the one that missed out. But it's so hard to meet somebody with a connection. And I feel yeah. like men nowadays don't court. Kenny, what do you, do you well, court? You're married. Though, yeah, I'm married right? now. Did but you court your wife? I did court my wife, and it was she, she was actually my first girlfriend of you know ever. So I, I'm a little different. Aww. So oh uh, I was always I'm not the, jealous. You know, <laughs> <laughs> but, um, but I actually started dating her in my 30s, so that's so it's a different story, right? So how is it, how is that my first girlfriend in my 30s? But for me, I was always more cautious about uh, women's feelings, so. Um, I had friends and we would do, you know, certain things, but I knew I'm not the type of person who's going to just lead you on to, uh, you know, say, I, I want to be with you if I was, if, if it was not my true intentions. Um, but one of the things I do want to ask, uh, cause you're not the first person I heard it said dating is dead, but for people like women who say um, dating is dead, what did it, lo- what did it look like when it was alive to you? Like, what did it look like? It was, with the question. So what is it? What's so different? <laughs> Then once you ask, once you answer that question, and then you start to figure out maybe it's not dead. It's maybe because things change in your, your life as well. You I know agree, I mean? but yeah, yes, yeah, so let's, let's, yeah, let's ask that. What did it look when like? When was it alive? Well, I will say that <laughs> <laughs> it's been dead for too long. I'm kidding. Dead for yeah. really long time. So then, <laughs> it's in the grave right yeah, now. Yeah. It, I don't know if it can be resuscitated at this point. <laughs> <laughs> it's buried in the ground. Um, no, I feel like I did have more of a lively dating life when I was younger, but I also didn't quite know what I was looking for. So that is a good question. Yes. But I know what I want. So there it is. And yes. Yeah, so, okay, we can take it there. But I do know what I want and I do know what my standards are. But I do think and I still stand true to the fact that this generation of dating has gone down. I feel like, I'm sorry, I feel mm. like men are lazy. Yeah. I do. I feel no, like men I- are lazy. I would strongly agree that men are lazy. And in in the, here's a the problem with a lot of guys, because I'm in a fraternity, I'm in around a bunch of men all the time, and I hear these stories. Uh, with men, it's instant gratification, right? And so um, they, but here's the problem with men. Men can be, they're always going to have that one woman that they want to date, but they're going to have several women that they just want to fuck or just hang out with. But so it's always like, Am I going to be that one woman that he want to take serious? Mm-hmm. You know what I mean? And so now like, there's no way to like uh, say I'm, I'm going to be the chosen one or whatnot. But the, the, the reality is um, the, the question becomes, um, how do I become like, uh, how do I put myself in a position where me and that man or that guy, we are aligned in the same, the same way, in the same position. Uh, so like you said before, you don't date people in the, in, in the gym because you already know who they are, what they're about, you know, and so forth. So then it's like, all right, now you meet a man. Um, and I, I, I tell a lot of my female friends, men run on scripts. Like they're going to talk to you the same way they talk to every woman. And if you allow him to talk to you this, t- that same way, then you, you, you're, you're falling right into his trap. So it's really like under, making him realize who you are. You know what I mean? And so um, when you, when, when, let's go back to uh, dating is dead, right? So like now if a guy comes to you, he's like, hey, I want to, um, I want to take you out. And he says, um, you me, I don't know how, or, or let me ask you this. Are you okay with somebody come and pick you up? Negative. So you're not okay with that? I'm not. Okay. COVID. So you, <laughs> I not COVID. I'm, I, not, <laughs> so, but we're going to go with COVID. It's okay. COVID times. <laughs> so, okay. So do you have rules of where you want to go, where, what you want to do? So I, I don't to that extent. So okay. let me tell you something, even getting a guy that says, I want to take you on a date is hard. 
Oh, really? Yes. Yeah, that's it is hard out I, here. I just don't believe that part. It really right? is. So, it is. I hear the story. Oh, really? It, yeah. it really oh, yeah. is. Cool. And even so, like, okay, let's just say. All I right. feel like it's easier when you're married. Oh, let me say, like, married true, men. Though. I'm like, <laughs> I'm hearing that um, from all my female friends that married <laughs> men come to them harder than single men. Mm-hmm. You know, I so, really don't so get hit on that much. Really? I, I don't. Not unless it's on apps. Well, I, I will say yeah. this. You're a very beautiful woman. But if I saw you sitting by yourself, I would not come to you. Yeah, you're intimidated. You're very intimidated. You don't have a, yeah. you have a leave me alone. I'm, I'm They're not. like, is she a walking filter? Yeah, yeah. She's going to be like, you have, girl, the, you kind fine, of, girl, you you have the kind I, of face that just like, I don't want to be bothered. Leave me alone. I'm just here to hang out. Well, if I'm at the gym, I'm not going to smile when I'm deadlifting. Like I'm. Well, well, you're not meeting people at the gym. So we're not talking about the gym. Okay, so let's, true. Yeah. But I'm not really going out in general to meet people. So let's just say online. So we know we're online to date. Yeah. Right? right. So I am pretty forward from the beginning, not forward in a sense of being pushy, but I'm pretty forward to say, I'm feeling you out. What are you looking for? What are you on this app for? And I can usually tell pretty quickly if somebody is just on there to mess around or if they're just wanting to, um, you know, play the field or whatever. So, you know, if that's the case, then I cut my losses. But a lot of guys that I've met or that I've dated in the past, I would say year to two years, they've come off very genuine. And then I see pretty quickly that they put on this facade of, oh yeah, I'm interested in you and I have good intentions just to come out to be a complete asshole Mm. and a completely different person instead of just saying, hey, this is what I do want or what I don't want. Because I'm I'm very upfront. I'm looking for a relationship. I'm looking for a partner that I can share my life with, but I'm not desperate. I want to find the right person. I want chemistry. I want to be courted. And I tell a guy, I give you a roadmap. I'm literally giving you a fucking roadmap. And I think it's a good thing and it's a bad thing. It's mm-hmm. a good thing because I'm very upfront with what I want and for the right person, that can be a good thing. But mm-hmm. sometimes when you are too upfront and I've learned this, you're giving a roadmap them. to the wrong people mm-hmm. and they know exactly what to say, AKA narcissists. They know exactly what to say to get what they want. And, and that's exactly what I was leading yeah. to. Yeah. yeah you you definitely true. agree with that. Yeah. Donna, what if, what, what's your experience with that? Have you, you know, are you the type of person, are you very upfront? Have you gotten that same reaction? So I have, it just depends on the person, you know, honestly, uh, I've, we've gone down the road route of like, you know, ch- talking, chatting. And if he's like, I want to take you on a date and he kind of ghosts me for a minute, I'm like, okay, then they'll hit me up weeks later. And they're like, well, I still want to go on a date. I'm like, well, you actually have to invite me somewhere. So there's things like this that that kind of happen. So it, it's like a hit or miss. I am up front um, when it hits that certain point when I actually know that they're not going to actually take any action. Um, so it, it really just depends on the guy, I guess. <laughs> I feel like a but lot of guys, they're, they're, they're all talk. I'm sorry. <laughs> yeah, a lot yeah. of them are all talk. It yes. goes nowhere. Like I was talking to a guy. Oh, I wasn't talking to him. It was just texting. And come to find out, Come to find out it's a small fucking world. I just so happened to text one of my girlfriends and, you know, I'm like, you're in the bodybuilding industry. You compete. He competes. Do you by chance know this guy? And he's (laughs) like, oh my God. She's like, so I'm actually going on a date with him on Sunday. And I'm like, I'm going on a date with him on Sunday. And so she's your date. I was like, we're supposed to do brunch. And she's like, well, we're supposed to go to the beach. I'm like, well, how the fuck is he going to pull this up? We didn't say shit. Like, let's just Y'all see. Y'all should have been running 10 minutes late each time. <laughs> <laughs> each other's dates. Oh, we uh, we just wanted to see what he was going to do. So we ran with this. We literally let this go for like a week. He would text her and she'd be like, oh, what if it rains? And then like 10 minutes later, I'd be like, oh, what if it rains? So we were just messing with him <laughs> oh, at this no. point. <laughs> but let me ask you, was he wrong though? Like, is, is no, he, no, no. Okay. So I'm not saying he's wrong. Okay, I was cool. just, I really wanted to see what he was going to do. Okay. Well, he ended up not going out with either one of us. And I'm going to tell you why, because I still was going to go out with him. <laughs> yeah. But he didn't make plans. So I said, let's go to brunch. And so I said, here, I'm even going to help you. Here's a couple places that I know of. So then a couple days later, I said, Hey, did you decide on a place? And he's like, Oh, no, I haven't had a chance to, you know, is there somewhere, you know, near you that takes last minute reservations? I said, I don't know. And I never heard from him again. Because he didn't make the plans. And then with her, I, he ended, he didn't make no plans either. And then he ended up saying, do you want to go for a walk? And she's like, it's fucking 95 degrees out in Florida. 
No, I'm not a dog. I don't want to walk. So none of us went out with them. Oh but that's God. the kind of guys that yeah. I meet. They're lazy. They don't take. They are. I will they say. They always from- say I want to take you out, but never actually make any plans. You could. There's a lot of things I want to do. <laughs> Yeah. <laughs> you know what I'm like, we don't do them all, you know. I feel like being married is is, is easier these days. But is chivalry dead? Lies. Is chivalry no. dead? You know what's so funny? Like I, um, before uh, I went on, met my wife and whatever, uh, I would it was this one girl I was, in, I was interested in. I would say, hey, let's go uh, wakeboarding. And she's like, I don't do, I don't like doing stuff with water. I said, like, okay, cool. Let's go bike riding. It is too hot. All right. So then it, it became. Uh, there's a lot of things that. M- I was trying to do with her, but it became an excuse. So it became to the point where I realized we have to do what you want to do. You know, I disagree because I feel like that's where the communication needs to be um, in the beginning. Because when I'm first talking to somebody, I'm evaluating you from that first conversation, even if it's through a dating app. I'm asking you, what kinds of things do you like to do? What are your interests? What do you do on your days off? What are your hobbies? So I'm when you're telling me all of these things, I'm evaluating, is this person a good match for me? Because if you tell me, oh, I go downtown every weekend, or I just go to the bar or go to the club with my boys on a Saturday night, I already know you're not going to be a good match for me because those are just things that I don't like to do very often. I prefer outdoors. But you have the mind of a clinician. <laughs> so <laughs> you're constantly analyzing people whether you want to or not true he was just going through conversation right and realizing that you probably like outdoor things right, right, right. and she probably isn't really into that and then by process of elimination he's like well that's good yeah. Move on. <laughs> <laughs> then at the same time like um uh, like if, if a guy continues to go to the bar downtown, um, uh, and I, used to, I tell this to both male and females, like you can't look at someone who's single and like and just judge their life because mm-hmm. if someone is single, this is this is how they live. But that person won't be the same way when they they might be in a relationship. So a man who goes out downtown or, or a woman who's always out in the street um, on Friday nights doesn't mean they're going to be the same person they uh, are when in a relationship with you. So he. Sure. He might start dating you and say, you know what? I don't need to go downtown anymore with my mm-hmm. boys. Um, he may not be a traveling person, but you may be a traveling person. And he might just, that was my case. I'm not a traveling person, but now every time she want to go somewhere, we we go somewhere, go to Australia, whatever we're going. Mm-hmm. And I hated it. So, but I'm just going with her now, but now I enjoy it. So there's certain things like, like I think a lot of people um, and men are, I tell a lot of guys, they are afraid of women because nowadays women are coming established. Establishing mm-hmm. career, yeah. establishing what they want, establishing like everything they have already. So men are like, "What can I provide to you?" And they're like, "Man, what I can't can bring to the table." Yeah, you know, yeah. What, <laughs> what can I bring to the table? So now, in their mind, they're like, uh, "Man, she's gonna be too much work." I I I, I, I want yeah, yeah. 100%, yeah that's what's happening. especially depending on the kind of man that you're trying to t- attract. Yeah, a high yeah. value man doesn't want a woman that's a lot of work. They don't. They don't. don't. Like, they want loyalty. Yes. They want conversation. They want understanding. They want. Well, that's what I want to know too. I, I have a question. Um, so as far as like these high value men who don't want a lot of work is a woman who has good money, makes her own money is like her own boss babe, essentially. Is that a lot of work for a high value man? I don't I think that's like- that I think like, I don't think money has anything to do for a so-called high value man. I think it's about your needs. Like, um, how difficult are you? Yeah. How difficult are you? You know, like, okay. Okay. Like a a guy, like for example, if a man who is a hustler or a grinder, or maybe he's just a CEO or he could be at a a, working at UPS, whatever it is, Mm -hmm. he just don't want to be able to come home and have to do so much other work with her. And like, and I do agree with you. Men are fucking lazy. Mm-hmm. And and it's mm-hmm. not it's not the sense that they're lazy in action. They're just more lazy in having to think about it. Mental. They were like, man, they're simple. They're simple. Yeah. Okay, like, simple. Like, and then there is lazy. Yeah. <laughs> no, yeah they're, they're lazy. It, it, I am a simple person. So yes, I am. I, I wonder those same questions because I'm somebody. I have my my business. I'm very business oriented. I have my own life. I I'm very established. Yeah. I also am not just somebody, I'm not stupid. You know, I'm, I'm, I consider myself an intelligent woman and I, educated. I, I'm educated. Mm-hmm. So I do think that it can be intimidating, but I don't think I'm hard to please. I really want the simple things in life. Now, of course, I want somebody to meet me at my level when it comes to certain things, but you don't have to be rich. 
I want to be treated yeah. fairly. I wanted to, I want to be valued. I want someone Absolutely. to, me. I want attention. I want things now, that you, most women want. Do you let them know this all on like first day or something? <laughs> no, I don't, <laughs> I don't overload them. Okay, okay. I, I mirror kind of what I see. So yeah. if I see somebody is truly interested and they're asking me these questions, the get to know me questions and I'm analyzing, okay, this person's interested. I'm going to kind of mirror their effort. So I, I have learned as I've gotten older to kind of, you know, see where things are going. I mirror them. So I'm not going to just like unload my wrath of okay. this is what I want. And if you don't give it to me, you know, no, I'm not going to do that because right. that can definitely push somebody away. Yeah. And I told, I li- literally uh, last week and I told my friend, uh, I was like, she had the same, she had the same talk with me. And I was like, you know, all of this, but no man knows this. So it's hard for him. Like with him, without him knowing this, he's just going to have to try through trial even put in the bare minimum effort when it comes to communicating. I, you know, a a text here and there. Okay. Yeah, fine. I don't mind texting, but whatever happened to actually picking up the phone and having a conversation, we have FaceTime now we can even do a FaceTime. Everything is so basic and it's just the basic bullshit communication. I mean, Donna, do you have the same issues? Because I feel like, I don't know if I'm the only one going through this, but (laughs) that's why you're you're not. I definitely do have the same issues. I'm actually, it's sad because I get excited when somebody's like, can I FaceTime you? I'm like, fuck yeah. (laughs) I want to bring up a point though, too, though, because I don't want to just shit on men. So I might get yeah. some backlash for this, but I also feel like part of the problem is women. And I, I think women are a bigger problem than mm. women yeah. are willing to admit. Yeah, because That's this, generation, I'm going to be real. So, and I'm, listen, I am not judging anybody for what you choose to do, whether you choose to get enhancements, you choose to, you know, make an OnlyFans. I don't care what you do, but let's just be honest. The generation that we live in is instant gratification. We are in a generation that you can go on Pornhub. You can watch some porn if you want to. You can go on a date app and hook up tonight if you want to. So it's too easy. And a lot of women make it easier for these men. So to me, men are hunters. Men naturally will pursue a woman, but if you are not giving them the work to pursue you, they're not going to. Mm -hmm. It's like, why are they going to put in the work if they don't have to? So our, this generation doesn't really make it mandatory for these men to court them or to put in the work. So why are they going to? So then when you have the women like myself, like Donna, you know, who are single and who require this amount of work, then it's like, Oh no, you're too much work. Oh yeah. I don't want to do it. That's it right there. That's exactly. Mm -hmm. And that to me, it's like that me because I'm worth the work. You know, I can't lower my standards. Yeah. It's it's just like on on average, uh, a man, and it's it's not that he needs to have a lot, right? And so, but the thing is, every single day, you know, he can meet a woman who's just who just really want to fuck. That's it. And so, if he, he's meeting mm-hmm. several women all the time, like, oh, she just want to fuck. That's that's all. That's good. And then he meets a woman like you, thinking, okay, he, he can come at you the same way because it's a pattern. Men, I'm telling you, all men work on patterns and scripts. So once he learns this works for this girl, this works for this girl, he's gonna try you. And then if it doesn't work, he's like, oh no, nah, I need to go around that. But, and again, like I mentioned before, every man has that one woman. I remember in college, um, I, all my fe- all my guy friends, I used to, they like every girl on campus. I always tell them they only get one. After that, I'm talking to everybody else. I'm talking to every girl. But if you told me you really like her and you really want to be with her, I'm going to leave her alone. I'm not going to try to talk to her. But if I'm not going to let you sit here and say you want to talk to every girl. That's, it's just impossible. You know, but uh, I do believe that every man at the end of the day is chasing one person. So do you think it's cultural? Do you think culture has affected dating or do you think it's just, I think it's multiple things. Yeah. I think like yeah, the divorce rate is higher now, right? Almost 50%. So the dating pool is like, it's overflowing with people, mm-hmm. you know? So people, mm-hmm. you know, a couple decades ago, people were staying together more, obviously. And yet I can't find a date. <laughs> <laughs> the competition is like increasing. And then not just that, it's not just the amount of people in the dating pool. I, from like what I see and like from, you know, I have a lot of clients that are single and they tell me everything. So from what I see, yeah, there's a lot of people out there that are willing to do something that you won't do. Mm-hmm. And depending mm-hmm. on where that man is in his phase of his life, you know, they might take advantage of that a little longer into their oh, years yeah. Yeah. than they would have if had it not been available the way that it is now. I think yeah. that I think that a high value man 
is going to definitely be attracted to a woman that's not going to force him to work a lot, like chase her and all this. And I feel like I bring all of those things to the table. And that's what gets me because I know that I am a high value woman. I am. And, and I don't think that's a bad thing knowing that. And I think as I've gotten older, I've known my worth even more, but I will say that when you have certain standards and when you know your worth, it is a lonelier road. Yeah. And mm-hmm. a good yeah. friend of mine, I mentioned this on a previous podcast, told me, you know, I told her, I don't have relationships or dating that lasts more than five, six weeks. And she said, that's because you're dating correctly. You don't stick around for the red flags. You don't stick around for the bullshit. You know what you want. And if they're not meeting those standards, you move on. But I will say I'm very reasonable. I, I just look for chemistry. If you can meet me on my own plane and if we can be a good match. But nine times out of 10, they end up being very ingenuine, dishonest people. And it usually comes out pretty quick. So mm-hmm. what about social media? Do you think social media has played a hand in how dating is today? Because I think it has. Donna? Yeah, absolutely. <laughs> Is that definitely that into your DMs or is that like so you know it's oddly enough um I don't get that many DMs that are like hitting on me maybe just like a compliment here and there but no like asking out dating stuff like that Chris and I get the guys from India we get what? a lot <laughs> of guys from <laughs> every day every day cheats or something <laughs> boobs to, you know like I, like so I'm sexy all... so sexy to and move. then they call me like through Instagram they yes, call oh my god I get, okay I do get that <laughs> Yes. I think they're real accounts. They're, they're, they, so they flood in. I'm going to start tagging Donna. So can call <laughs> yeah. Oh, no, no, Donna. After this podcast, they're going to call you. They're going to call you next. That's crazy. So they call you and you hear the voice. Actually. Yeah. Yes. Like, Hello. I'm, yeah. I'm a big fan. Like I told my husband, I'm like, what is happening right now? He's like, there's got to be a way to turn that on. And, you know, okay, to, to my fans from India that are listening, because I know I have some of you listening, I appreciate you and I love you. Just it's, don't call her. Just don't be inappropriate. <laughs> don't be inappropriate. I don't want to see my dick. I don't. Oh, wait. You we, don't want to see my dick. Pic. <laughs> <laughs> no, I don't. Who doesn't want to see my dick pic? I don't. I never invited you to send me the dick pic. <laughs> Yeah, I just who gave you permission to send me the dick pic, sir? No one asked oh. you for the dick pic. Donna's gonna start getting is it the okay? Dick pic. Uh, just side note, is it send okay? Send it to Donna. No, okay? please don't. Absolutely, Absolutely not. <laughs> After the second date, they can't send it. No, pic. Okay, I don't want to see your penis. If oh. I ever want a dick no, pic, if I, listen, listen, <laughs> unless I ask I for a dick pic, yeah, listen, unless I ask you for a dick pic, don't send me a dick pic. That's true. If you ask for it, yeah, different. I'm like, not saying that women don't like dick. We just don't want to see a random dick. Like, yeah. I think it's very egotistical <laughs> and narcissistic to just be like, here, look at my dick. Do you like I it? No. Do wow. I need to stroke your ego? Do you need your ego stroked that that's much? Crazy. Yeah, that's crazy. I don't just yeah. randomly send you a pussy pic. I'm sure you would like it, but I'm not <laughs> going to do it. You don't send PPs. <laughs> and I think women have voiced the fact that we don't like dick pics. So why are men doing it? I don't know. Yeah. I don't understand I don't know. But yeah, so I don't get guys sliding through my DMs either. It's very random. But the ones that I do, it's mostly those types of messages or voice messages. And it's not ever, it's not like the man of my dreams, Prince Charming, is sliding through my DMs to sweep me off my feet. Um, I have a question. Donna, so the last guy that you dated, how did you meet him? Was it through friends? Was it at work? Okay, define dating. Like how long does this period of dating have to (laughs) be? Okay, two, three months. Is that oh, long distance so, considered so dating somebody? Boy, like official boyfriend. I, um, I think it's <laughs> almost in relationship status at two, three months. Okay. Wow. But wow. I, I can't I, even get past like a week or two weeks. Wow. Same, same. Okay. Me yeah. is four weeks. My okay. Age. So your last boyfriend then, how did you meet him? Oh, I knew him back in college. So I already knew him. And the only reason why we even dated is because I re-met up with him. So we already had an established relationship basically. All right, so I have a solution for you guys. Enroll in college. <laughs> I'm not going back. But... Well, here's a, here's a thing. Next class. <laughs> Been there, done I would never. Hell no. <laughs> With that being said, it kind of proves a point I said to someone recently. You probably have already either fucked or dated or just made a friend out of someone you're meant to be with. Oh my gosh. And then you just go back yeah, to it because you, you don't know back. anything. You don't, you don't I do not want to go back. Think about it one day. Just go for like tonight when you go lay down in bed. It's like, who? 
have I ever recycled? <laughs> yeah, and just think, okay, maybe this is my recycling bin. Who can I restore? Gave them all a chance. Listen, four I, weeks is I a have. I, oh, they. It's it's <laughs> plenty of time to see your true colors. Okay, like the last guy that I dated, I'm not going to say his name, but he was in the entertainment industry. Never thought that he would be my type. I never expected it to be my type. But when we met, we hit it off. We had great chemistry. Yeah, you had chemistry. We had amazing chemistry. And I really liked him. I didn't like him for his money. I didn't like him for who he was. I like I, the money. Or, or I did like him for who he was. <laughs> I, I didn't like him for his money or who he was in the industry. I, I just liked him as a person. The money's nice. The money's yeah. nice. Okay, it's not so necessary. It's not it's there. A personal thing. It's the icing on the cake. It's the icing on the it's cake fine. because it was nice for someone to say, put your money away. Yeah. And it was nice to be yeah. treated yeah. like a queen. Yeah. And I thought we had this great... Great chemistry. We were hitting it off. I even bought this man a CPAP. Oh, so, wow. Google celebrities that need CPAP. So I mean, <laughs> we got really comfortable with each other. Let's closing in on this way. guy. I'm not going <laughs> to, but we got really comfortable. And then even after, we you know, we still continued to have conversations and I thought we were going to you know, meet. I met people who were close to him. And then all of a sudden, poof, poof with, so this, you know, within, yeah, within what, Two months and it's like poof, you're gone. But I will say, having been um, somebody that you shared the timeline of events as they were happening, he was looking for somebody that was accessible to him that could I drop agree. everything and mm-hmm. go with him because he would be like, "Hey, can you come out here? I'm doing a show here. Can you come? Can I fly you here? Can I?" That's what he wanted and probably requires to be able to have. I agree and continue his yeah. lifestyle. That's not something that you can, I mean, maybe you would do that for somebody that you've been in a relationship with for a long time, but you guys are brand new. Like you're right. not going to just drop everything. Right. Yeah. And, and, I, and I know that's, that situation was probably not the norm. It's definitely not, it's the, definitely norm. not the norm, but I just tend to meet guys who either are intimidated or it's, they just change who they are. You need an alpha. I, I do. I feel like I, I need an alpha. But you don't want an alpha. Uh, I can be a little what? alpha. That's the problem. You need to find somebody who is alpha enough to actually allow you your feminine side. That's, that's my problem is because I'm pretty alpha in my general life, but it's hard to find a more alpha male who doesn't go for those super beta ass females. You know what I mean? (laughs) So who should pay? Who should pay? Because I'm very Ooh. old school. I feel like if we're going on a date, I don't care who asks who out. I feel mm-hmm. like as a man, yeah. you should pay. And right. I'm just a little bit old school. I want to be courted. I'm not saying that if we start to date and go into a relationship that it's always going to be like that. But I do feel as a man, you should pay. But I've talked to women mm-hmm. who go into this conclusion sometimes that they're like, well, no, I don't want to pay because A, I can pay for myself. Mm-hmm. And B, I don't want them to think that I owe them anything. And, mm-hmm. I, you know, I can do it on my own. And it's like, okay, well, that's part of the problem there. That's part of this whole, I can be independent. Like, yes, you, we know you can be independent. I'm independent, but mm-hmm. as a man, I still think you should pay. No, I agree. Like, if I agree you, with that too. I, I agree. Like, I have no problem saying, Hey, yeah, like if it, it just seems normal, like it's like almost like opening doors or just You'd be surprised. Like yeah. yeah. Like, uh, mm-hmm. But I think that, yeah. yeah, I just don't see it. Okay, wait, I heard, I heard a topic. Sorry. Um, there was this thing that they were basically saying, if a guy is going to take out a business, um, somebody that they are trying to go into business with another male, whatever they go out, they're trying to impress this guy. They pay for the meal. Right. So why would it not be the same for a female that you're trying to take on a date that you're trying to impress? That was your, uh, yeah, I agree. I was going to say, um, Back in my day, when I dated, him. <laughs> which is Back very recent, a year. You, you act like it was so long ago. <laughs> well, um, so whenever I was taken out, like if you invite me out, then I kind of did. Not that I'm like, oh, you have to pay, but it's just like you're inviting me, right? So if I invite someone to go to, hey, let's go, like have lunch or brunch or whatever, like I might end up paying, except for my best friend. Like we've been together so long now, her and I, like. We just always like, okay, you pay your bill. I pay my bill, but it's different. Like if you're going to go meet somebody for the first time, I am always going to be like, if I invite you, I'm always going to try to pay. So if back then in my day, when I was dating (laughs) and they invited me, I kind of did think, you know, okay, they're going to pay. But second or third date, I would always try to pay because I wanted to make it known. Like I don't need you 
without being disrespectful. Do you know what I'm saying? Like, and, and, I'm not here for whatever you have. I'm right. just here for you. Right. right. You know? Yeah. And that goes to the thing I was telling before. Every man wants to be needed. Men, that's yes. what they want. They want yes. to be, feel like they need it. Yeah. So, like I said before, you, they can... Uh, that guy may look at you, whoever that guy was who was using a CPAP, or whatever. He may uh, <laughs> look at you and be like, CPAP, dude. Yeah, he, he may look at you and say, you know what? She don't really need me. Like, she just likes me. So, but they want, like, men like their egos to be strong. Now, here's the thing for me. I, like, like I said before, it's normal. If I went on a date, I'm paying for it. It's just like, it's just, it's normal. Here's the thing I have for you guys, you women. If someone takes you to Colombia or, uh, uh, or Thailand, and a trip, all paid expense, all this stuff. Is it okay for him to re- require? I'm mean, not require, expect. You know, sex. Let's say Hell that. Right? No, I literally no. just wrote that down and circled it. <laughs> sex question mark. Oh, right. <laughs> then, then it's like okay, so like, um, it's okay to be hopeful. <laughs> 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 Bitch, we here. You don't know what's happening. You don't know. <laughs> I think that it shouldn't. Nothing should ever be expected right. from anybody. I agree. Right. You have to go you into owe anybody. Anything. You don't owe yeah, anybody you know. anything, and you can't right. go. And now I'm preaching to the choir here because I go into these when I start dating a guy and I get really excited, which is very rare. I don't get excited often, so when I do, I I have all these like possible expectations, and here I am saying you shouldn't go into situations with expectations. But I think when it comes to sex, though, specifically, you shouldn't have expectations. So you have to, even as a man, if you are going to pay for something and you choose to pay for something, which I think is honorable and mm-hmm. something if you're really interested in the girl, you should do. Right. But if yeah. you're going to take her on a trip or something big, you yeah. need to do it with the understanding that if it happens, it happens. If yeah. it doesn't, it doesn't. Now, I'm going to yeah. be honest with you. Me personally, and this is not every every female, but if I go on a trip with a guy, which honestly has never happened, but if I said yes to go on a trip, it's because I'm feeling you and you're probably going to get okay, laid. Exactly. And that's, yeah. and that's because otherwise I'm not going to go. Right. That's the, that's what I'm getting in that right there. Like, because yeah. again, this all, everything is about what they, it's so many, but things can change. What you mean? Things, things can change. change. What if mid trip you do some real stupid shit oh. and I'm like, oh yeah. no. Oh, right, I, Jake, I, right. Let me quickly tell you a quick story. A, a good Huge friend of mine, he takes, <laughs> he takes this girl out to uh, Cardine and whatever, and everything was set. They they talked about everything. He made it clear like his intentions: have a good time, have sex, have wild sex, take her to every place around there. They get there. Uh, the day she says, "I'm not into having sex and then like that," so he said, "Okay, that's cool." He left her there, like got her her own room, and he, you know he did his own thing. Cancel her flight. She had to do her own <laughs> thing. So I, I said, that's, fucked up. that's really Damn, fucked up. Damn, that is fucked I realized, up. I realized something. She played him and, you know. <laughs> I, You know what? I'm going to halfway agree with you because yeah. you as a, in my mind, like if you're going, maybe that's just like the kind of women that we are. Like yeah. you're going to know where I'm at. Yeah. Right. Nah. Or maybe she changed her mind. And Maybe that's the thing. Or we can change our mind at yeah. any point, and so yeah, can agreed. a man. Yeah. So but I, you better have the money to fly. Right, right, exactly. So that's not <laughs> on her if she doesn't have the money to fly herself back. But I don't think it's right that he canceled her her flight. Yeah, that's real petty. Yeah. Yeah. That's, that's, yeah. that's, yeah. that's like yeah. expert yeah. level. her out there, yeah. Well, well, the thing is, he, he said he canceled his flight. It was attached. They were all together. Okay. And because he was going somewhere else. So, But he got her a room, and he said he didn't know that once. Like, he forgot that once he canceled his flight, um, that it canceled her. Yeah, it canceled her. So, so it was uh, unintentional. It was unintentional. Yeah. Okay, that's a but little. At said, least it wasn't malicious. Like, uh, did you end up getting what he said? No. At that point, it's too late. Yeah. She got to do her thing. Yeah, yeah. And he, but I got her her own room. I just I told her we're not staying in the same room. I'm not going to stay in this beautiful room with you and then feel like okay, I can't do nothing with you. No, he was rejected too. So yeah. I'm sure his ego was was <laughs> hit a little bit. You know. Yeah. I mean, I but. That's a little, again, I'm not going to go on a trip with someone unless I'm really, really yeah. feeling you. I have yeah. to be like relationship status for you or just really feeling like, you know, even with the guy that I was dating, he took me shopping and I felt very uncomfortable. There were things that he wanted to buy me that I said no to because I, I'm not saying that I don't deserve stuff like that. But as somebody who is independent, I make my own money. It was really uncomfortable for me because I didn't want him to think that that's all I was after. I truly... Right 
did not like him or want him for his money. Mm -hmm. And he ended up did, he did buy me some things, but not what he originally wanted to, but that was his love language. That's part of his flex. Mm -hmm. That's his flex. Like he, that makes him like, he'll, he, he would, he would do that for you. He would do that for his wife. Mm -hmm. And when you reject that, like when somebody is like genuinely, like I can buy these things, I want to buy them for you. When you reject that, yeah, you make them feel like you don't need me. How do I show you that I want to be with you mm-hmm. or I want to spoil mm-hmm. you and you don't let me? Yeah. So, uh, so you got to accept it. But yeah, I'm not you gonna have lie. To it. It you nice, have to go so. to the Chanel store I yeah. and accept Chanel. it. <laughs> Listen, if the, the if he, he ghosted me, so if he comes back, I'm gonna say meet me at yeah. Chanel. It's not about you. I'm at Chanel right now. Do you want to meet me? Like, you want champagne? Like I already got. <laughs> anytime you can apologize. Hear, <laughs> anytime I hear um, a woman saying that he he want to buy me something, let the man buy you stuff, girl. It's not. It's not. It's not. It, it, it wasn't. It wasn't that. It's true. It was the level. It was the level to where it was. It was so new. And it, yeah. I was thrown into a world that is so different from my own. Yeah. And it's like, do you want this? Do you want that? I'm like, whoa, whoa, whoa. I don't want you to think that this is why I'm, 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 I'm actually, I was actually genuinely interested in this man yeah. because I, I care. I developed It's feelings. noble, but yeah. now you know it's not necessary. Yeah, right. Well, I mean, I'm mm-hmm. also used to dating. I don't want to say it. I'm just, used to, I'm just used to dating guys who don't have their shit together. I, it's <laughs> hard. It's you need an hard. outfit. Alphas are a pain in the ass. They're a serious pain in the ass. My husband is an alpha. He, <laughs> my gosh. Okay, so he used to describe being with me as in like being in a, a sword fight of dicks because I also. <laughs> <laughs> No lie, like bicycle. Like how much? Oh, it's like being in a freaking sword fight of dicks with you. Like always trying to get control. And then one day, you're also Puerto Rican, girl. So I'm sure that is probably part of the problem. (laughs) And I'm a Scorpio, Scorpio and Puerto Rican. And for those of you that can't see Jay Marie, please follow her after, and you will know exactly what I'm talking about. But you know. my husband is somebody that is like, he's, he's a real man. Like he's, he's a man's man, like a man, you know what I'm saying? Like mm, that is I hard want. to find, you know, does he, have a brother? he does, but he's married. Oh. He's a man, man. Cousins. Too. They're not men. Man. <laughs> <Stop brothers. laughs> Any, anybody close anybody to the man? Family? <laughs> like I was telling Carice, like a, so when somebody with my personality, his personality gets together, it is you butt heads like the first eight years of our marriage, which is sad to say, all we did was butt heads trying to fight for power. And finally I had to, and I chose to submit, but I realized my problem was, is I didn't trust him to lead me the way that I thought we should be led. And he thought that it wasn't my place to take away from him what is ingrained in a man to do for you, which is lead you, take care of you, protect you, provide for you. Real men, real men, like high value men, that's what they do, you know? And they don't always, they don't always have to be alphas, but that's what they want to do. And you have to give them the space to do that. So when I finally gave it to him, he, all he wanted to do was do whatever I wanted. So that's literally, he just wanted to make me happy and and that's it. But I feel like high value men will make alpha women feel safe enough to drop their guard to become more submissive. And I'm not saying yes. submissive in a feministic way. And he did. But we feel like I know for me as an alpha woman, if I meet a man who makes me feel safe and protected and there's trust there, I will become very nurturing. I will let my guard down yeah. because I feel comfortable doing so. But yeah. it's very, very rare and yeah. it, it yeah. barely happens. So I want to talk on one more subject. So let's talk about sex. We brought it up a little bit, but, um, and Kenny, I want to get your input on this too. Yes. Sex on the first date. Does that change a man's view on a woman? Does that change how he views if, she, if he's going to take her serious or not? That's a myth. That's a, that's a myth right there. And uh, I, again, I go back to say before, if a man, if you have sex on the first date with a, a man and he doesn't call you, that man would have had sex with you on the 90th day and not call you. Mm. You know what I mean? Okay. It's, it, the sex is not. He probably a, wouldn't even made it that long. Yeah. Well, yeah. Some, <laughs> I know a lot of guys who stick around as long as they can, especially if it's a, if it's an attractive woman. Because it's an ego thing. Yeah. It's an ego thing. Yeah. They want to so win. I, I don't think uh, uh, sex is a deal maker or a deal breaker. It uh, it does save a woman emotionally though. Like, like um, if you don't have sex with them, he doesn't call you. You feel better. 
You know I'm not going to lie. So for me, I, I know my own triggers and for me, it sucks. So if I'm, I can be really into a guy, but let's say we have sex and there's that exchange of energy because energy, sex is an exchange of energy. Right, it, it really yeah. is. It Whether is. it's physical, emotional, whatever it is, it's still an exchange of energy. So for me, once that happens, it's a level of vulnerability that becomes exposed to me. And I notice for me, that's when the emotions become more evident. So for example, the guy that I recently dated, had we have not had sex, I I don't think that I would have been as upset right. about him ghosting me. Mm-hmm. And I know he didn't ghost me because of the sex, because he made it obvious how attracted he was to me, how interested he was. And even after we spent physical time together, right. he still continued to contact me. So for me, I just know that that's my trigger. So as much as I am a physical and I am a sexual human being and I, I embrace my sexuality, I just know that if I have sex with somebody, it just exposes that. And so for me, I almost just want to wait until I meet the right person. But then every time I feel like I meet somebody who's potentially good and then we get physical and they end up being a complete asshole yeah, so and it, then I'm devastated. And that's what I'm saying. It doesn't make it, it's no, no difference. But here's what I would say. I'm going to tell you a secret. This is a real true secret. No, Men <laughs> are far more emotional than women and women are oh far more sexual than men. But now here's the thing. They <laughs> so they let's see it. Right. Yeah. So if a man and I've been guilty of this, like if you, you can ask a man to open up before you have sex, he, he probably will be like, Nah, that's not me. No, you, you gotta know. do it after. Right when you do it after, mm-hmm. oh my god, that's it's when like, you have you the talks everything. And that then you want to have. What happens is, <laughs> if you allow a man to be vulnerable with you, oh my god, he's gonna be he gonna he it's 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 better than the sex room, the sex in addition. So th- this is why I say sex t- sometimes on the first day, um, at, at any time actually. Once you have sex with a man, he's gonna be emotional with you. He's gonna be open with you. He's gonna. Like if you if you start to dig into him, not like really want to, you know, be invested in him, once you have sex with that guy and you start asking him questions or, you know, having him open up, he's gonna do it. We- I found the so opposite. After we open up, they open up. <laughs> yeah. I don't know. I, I found the opposite because I've had a couple situations where that has happened and they either got they got scared or they backed mm-hmm. off. So I don't know if it became too real for them. Mm-hmm. It's almost like, okay, we yeah. we're talking about I'm looking for something serious or this is, you know, very future oriented. Then we have sex. And then it's like the whole energy changes. And, you know, when I've, I've actually talked to one or two way later on down the line. And of course they're like, I messed up or blah, 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 or whatever. You were the one that got away. Yeah. yeah, yeah. Great. So it's like, I don't know if they're just intimidated because I know exactly what I want. Or if I just gave them the roadmap to tell me what I wanted to hear to get me in bed. (laughs) Well, I'm telling you, like, I'm not dating you and I'm intimidated by you. You know what I mean? Like, yeah, I'm like, it's it's not even, I'm I'm joking here, but I'm just saying like, the reality is like, you have a, like, uh, like a, a man come and I, I use the example, if you don't mind, I know you're married. If I saw you and I'd be like, oh, she looks like friendly. I could just, you know, kick it with her. We can, you know, even if I mess up, we can still kick it. We'd be friends. You, I know if I mess up, I'm like, all right, she will probably cut my tires or she'll, you know, or, or she'll probably <laughs> put my shit my out tires. there. My tires, I'm not no, even like that. I know, you're not like that, but we all have notions or yeah. pre, pre things about each other when we see each other. I'm like, I seem and, intense, and, I guess. And, yeah. now, and I want y'all to you do this. very yeah. intense features, yeah. yeah. <laughs> I want y'all. I want all y'all. It's the brows, and you know whose right. fault that is. It's her <laughs> because she does my brows. Oh, really? She's yeah. my brows. Right, so when, I want y'all to do this. Next time you go to a bar or party, look at the like men walking around. They're like looking around to see who looks like they're befriending, who's easier. Like then they look. They might look at you and turn away, or they might look at a girl. Hey, and they just. It's like a like a, it's a chemistry. It's like something happens, like an aura. Like I know. She's okay if I, you know, we can talk. And just, you know, I will say that I don't get approached much. And if I do, yeah, it's yeah. I'm maybe with other girls. But for the most part, I don't get approached. I, I really don't ever. Maybe and and when I have t- like a dumb smile look when you look at them. <laughs> I know, no, no, no. I'm awkward. I'm so awkward. So as much as I seem like I have it put together, I I don't know what to say. Like when somebody comes up to me, I, I have this really bad habit of like cutting them off mid sentence and like, okay, it's nice to meet you. you Got to go by, and then I walk away. It's so Girl, fucking I'm weird right. because I just get <laughs> awkward. I don't now if I know someone's interested in me and we've already kind of established conversation, then I can you know flirt and I'm on a date, great. But if someone just randomly comes up to me, I have no idea what I'm doing. 
And I also worked in the prison system. So I worked around so many male inmates. So I had to have that persona and I don't know how to get rid of it. So my, I'm trying to like, I need to smile more. I need to be more flirtatious, I guess, because I'm 36 and I'm like, I'm, I'm wasting my it's something I don't know, like maybe, yeah, <laughs> I don't know. I think, but at the same time, you want to be genuine, and right? I, and I, I'm, and myself, I'm, like yeah. I hate to say that what I just said because I don't want you to feel like you have to change, right? Yeah, but because you want God to accept you for who you are. Because when people get to know me, they're yeah. like, Oh, you're totally different. Oh, yeah, like I'm Donna, sure that. yeah, Donna, I feel like me and you, like, we need to meet people through friends, or yes. yeah. I that's think that's our, our yeah. best way, honestly. Yeah. I mean, it yeah. is. This. Has any friend of yours, male or female, ever tried to uh, hook you up with someone? Here and there, and it never works. It just never works. Most of my friends are married, and then their friends are married, so it just never works out. So I actually want to ask each one of you a question, and and let's do this before we close out, too. I want to know from each one of you, what do you think needs to change with the dating world, or what would you like to see change? And Kenny, I want to start with you. All right. One of the things that I think needs to change is uh, people like giving each other a, a chance. I, you know, when Rihanna said, I found love in a hopeless mm-hmm. place, she was talking about really like finding love in a place that she never thought, like pretty much giving herself the chance, you know like So like you said earlier, you give yourself four weeks and it might be trash, you know, and it, it, it may very well be, but is that really enough time? Because you, that might be your, your timeline, but he has a lot of shit to do too. A lot of shit he has to get rid of as well. So we we meet people and we're like, okay, there's a time, there's a time. But then on that end, um, he has to get stuff together. Like when I started dating my wife, you know, it, it we dated for four years before I actually proposed, and there's a lot of shit I had to get together. Always, one hundred percent. So yeah. if you give it enough time, even if it's just a few extra days, a few extra weeks, time always reveals everything. Mm-hmm. And Jay Marie, what about you? What do you think needs to change? Um, expectation as far as like, um, what women expect now versus what, you know, our parents might've expected, you Mm -hmm. know, um, it's on a different level because of culture, because of social media, because of comparison, you know, comparing your Instagramming, like, oh, he's doing this for her and he's taking her here and then blah, blah, blah. You know, it's just like, it's fake. It's fake. How about just being there to get to know that person instead of wondering, when are they going to do this for me? When are they going to do that for me? You know, and guilty of it, married, guilty of it. Like so-and-so is going here. When is he going to take me there? Meanwhile, like, you don't know if they broke as fuck, you know, like living off credit cards and like, <laughs> you, know, you don't know. Yes. So um, expectation in comparison, I feel like is the big thing. And that's something that you take with you, not just through dating. That's just life. That's a really good point because social media, man, I think we're all guilty of it. We compare, we see, I know for me, I've talked about this, you know, in my podcast with Gia that, you know, it's, it's like, we see these perfected, you know, fitness models and these couples and these travel accounts. And it's like, okay, well, what are they doing that I'm not doing? Why do they look like that? But we don't know what's going on behind this. They don't look like that year round. Right. I don't look how I looked, uh, nine months ago, right. When I was at my leanest, you know, so, but you won't see me post a lot of pictures of me at my weight right now. You'll see me post like highlights of my life, but I don't care. You know, like, I don't care. I tell people like what I'm doing, where I'm at all the time. I still post pictures of how I look right now, but that's just the reality of it. Like it's hard to find that real and rawness, but you should have that within your own relationship instead of putting the expectation of like what the world thinks you should look like and do and talk to each other. And this is how you should, you know, this is what you should be doing. So I think Mm -hmm. putting it onto perspective and making sure that you're not comparing and that your expectation is realistic of, you know, and not, not, you know, putting it up against like what the world tells you it should be. And I think stigma too, right? Because stigma is like, okay, well, you need to be married by this time or you should be doing this Mm. and changing. Things are changing. There's no timelines anymore. Now it's kind of like, we're like, well, nope, I'm going to do what I want. And as a woman, we are changing even as women. So much has changed throughout the decades. I mean, even look at the last 50 years of how much things have changed within women, within dating, which with the standards of what women are supposed to do, you know, yeah. we've changed tremendously. Parenting, parenting, everything. everything. Donna, what mm-hmm. about you? What do you think needs to change with dating? 
Oh, gosh. I, I will go back onto the idea of, yes, those expectations need to kind of be diminished in some way. I think that the, I think that people need to live in the now. So when things like when you say like, oh, I want this, this and that, like maybe demanding too much up front is a lot for people, especially nowadays, a lot of people have commitment issues. Mm -hmm. So for you to say things like I want this, this and that it could scare people off. So I think it's more of just enjoying the moment, enjoying the process of like falling in love with somebody. And even if it lasts four weeks, you know, two years, not to say that the entire relationship is shit, because you still learned something from that relationship. I think it's just living in the now. Um, and then another thing I think that we need to kind of get rid of is the idea that everything should flow so easily. Like Instagram, we live in a world of instant gratification. We literally have Instagram instant gratification. So yeah. everything is just, everybody thinks that everything should just be so fucking easy. And like, if, if there's like even a slight twinge in my heart that makes me feel like in disagreement with what's happening, immediately people turn away. I think the problem is, is that people don't want to deal with even just the slight bit of discomfort. I think if we could just get past the idea that everything's supposed to be easy, then we could actually develop true relationships. I agree. You don't know what our parents, grandparents went through to get to what they Mm. had. And like, we want it in our 20s. Right. We want that car, that bag, that house. We want that early. Right away. Right now. (laughs) And then there's a few people that are out there. They're like, "Uh, no, we're going to you know, try to work to be debt free and, you know, those things will come later, but we want to floss mm-hmm. young. We want to be like, look at me, I'm going here, I'm doing this, I'm doing that. And meanwhile, a lot of those people, not all of them, a lot of those people are, like I said, up to their neck in credit card debt or, you know, mm-hmm. mooching off friends or whatever, you know, just trying to live that life, trying to look like they're about that life. Yeah. And you just never know. I I think social media has changed everything. Mm -hmm. And it's so hard for many to stay in the moment because we just get into this mode of, like Donna said, instant gratification. Mm -hmm. We are so used to that in everyday life. So think about it. It's not just our relationships. It's when we're going to a browser page and it's not loading fast Mm -hmm. enough. We're going to, I'm going to refresh it. Like, why is it taking so long? (laughs) And the light is red. I'm like, why is it taking so long? You know, we literally are in a generation that everything is right now. It's quick. I can push a button and I can have. I can have a box from Amazon the same day. Yeah. I can we have car dispensaries. You fucking yes. put a coin in and the car gets deposited to you. Like I yeah, I can literally order groceries and it's delivered to me. If yeah, I Uber day. Eats, it can come to me. And so we we're in this whole different generation that everything is now. So if somebody's not except providing, a relationship except that's a relationship. worth a damn, apparently. So <laughs> it, it's it's like we, you still gotta do that old school. Mm-hmm. It, but yeah. the thing is, like we're in a generation of we're so connected now. But the irony is we're so disconnected. Yeah. Yes, I feel that. We're, we're more connected now than we're, we've we're ever had We're further been, away now. But we're further away from each other. We are de- dehumanizing each other. Mm-hmm. And as humans, evolutionary humans, like mm-hmm. if you go back into the evolution of, of, you know, just who we are as a species, we are not meant to be alone. Mm-hmm. We're meant mm-hmm. to be with each other, whether you look at it from a religious standpoint or whether you look at it from, from an evolutionary standpoint. We are not meant to be alone. Yeah. And I think some people too have this mindset, I don't need no man and da da da. That's, well, that's no. toxic. That, that is another problem. Yes. Yeah, that's no, 100% toxic. It's, it's, we all need, yeah, it's, it's we need honest. them, they need us. Right. Yeah, yes. It's it's, fi- it's it's a two way street. It's not just like, oh, men need women. No, it, it's, it's, it's a two way street. So, for mm-hmm. my opinion, in terms of what I think needs to change with dating is to just get out of this instant gratification mindset, but just put an effort. Just put an yeah, effort. If you're effort. into somebody, just say what you want and be upfront. Don't beat around the bush because you're uncomfortable. Get over being uncomfortable. Tell somebody what you want. Be honest with them and don't don't bullshit me. I want that CPAP machine, girl. <laughs> I want my money back. <laughs> I want $136 back, sir. Plus gas money. I want you to Thank meet you. me at the Chanel yeah. store next time. <laughs> I won't say no again. I promise. I I want my money back. Thank you. (laughs) After this episode airs, I want my money back. (laughs) Real, just be real. Listen, if you don't want something, just say you don't want it. If you're not interested, say you're not interested. Don't fuck around with my heart. Don't Mm -hmm. fuck with my feelings, and don't bring out vulnerability in me. 
if you don't intend to follow through with it. If yeah. you don't do vulnerable shit, if you don't want vulnerability in a relationship, like mm-hmm. why, if, if you're going to just date somebody, don't do vulnerable shit. Oh, just for men. I just want to know for men so that they know what is a vulnerable shit that they can stay away from. I, I, I think for. She's talking mm-hmm. about a guy that's trying to play a woman to get oh, what he wants. Okay. Not every guy is like that. Okay, cool. Right. Well, yeah. So, <laughs> so like, like when you, okay. Vulnerability, like when you're doing like relationship stuff, oh, yeah. you're taking mm-hmm. showers with somebody. Oh. You're holding your hand, walking throughout. You're being you're EDA that? in public. Yeah. 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 EDA, EDA in public. Without being your girlfriend, no, you're not being exclusive. Whatever. Yeah. Doing that? And listen, I'm not saying I go around doing no. that, but you know, when you think you have a, a connection with somebody, you know, I, I guess I did some charity work. I don't know. You know, it, <laughs> <laughs> you definitely, did I, well. you know, I took my heart <laughs> a little bit, you know, but I, just be real. So that, that's what I think needs to change because I, I can say at the end of the day, I will always sleep good at night because I have always been honest to my intentions. I'm always honest with the people around me. I will not lie to you. And I'm just a genuine person. I, I don't feel a need to be otherwise. So that, and you own a tempur yeah. And I own a tempur <laughs> I have a body pillow. So. <laughs> oh, me too. I still have a body pillow. Oh my God, like body pillows are my favorite. It. I will never forget that. I just <laughs> bought a Zoe pillow and that was it. $80 because I needed something to hug on to. I'm not going to lie. I'm I don't care. And, and I bought one of those um, roses off of Amazon. Oh, rose. islands, crickets. Oh. What is it? You guys haven't heard of the rose? No. no. Can you heard of the rose? It sounds like a toy that I don't know. Yeah. <laughs> Bingo. <laughs> it's a very lovely That's toy. That's for another yeah. day. That's another topic yeah. for I another day. That with my body. <laughs> <laughs> okay, so Donna, um, I want everyone to be able to follow you. And because um, I know you have some hilarious reels on TikTok. I love your Instagram. So and I know that recently you are trying to help people launch their own social media and you're doing um, uh, some kind of a uh, business with that. So tell, tell everyone where you can follow and, and let them know a little bit about what you're doing. Yeah. So it's pretty easy to find me. Uh, my Instagram, TikTok, all the same thing. It's my first name, D-A-N-N-A-G-I-F-T. You can follow me there. Um, and basically what I'm doing is I am teaching people how to grow their social media um, and how to basically turn their followers into clients. So that is my primary focus. I have my course launching on Tuesday and then I will be running my next one after five weeks. So right now, currently I have about three slots left um, and then the next one I'll open up another 10 slots. So. Awesome. Thank you so much. And definitely hit up Donna because I've been watching her growth since the time that I've been following her. And she's a true entrepreneur. She does her research. This isn't somebody that just sits around on the couch. Like this girl's up at one eight, one o'clock in the morning with her charts, writing down notes. So definitely <laughs> yeah. follow her. Um, and Jay Marie, where can everybody follow you? Um, Instagram, TikTok at Jay Marie Carrasco, J-A-Y-M-A-R-I-E Carrasco, C-A-R-R-A-S-C-O longest handle ever. And for those of you that are in the Orlando area, Jay Marie does everything beauty. So hit her nice. up because she's, yes. she is my go-to person for brows, lashes. She hooks me up. So right. yeah, if you're in Orlando, definitely check her out. And then Kenny is my engineer, man. He's my videographer, my yes. engineer. You guys need to record a podcast. Yes. Yeah. And yep. he's got, he's, he's recording a show. So tell, yeah, tell everyone so, about that. So uh, follow Honey Lemon series. We are film, filming the TV pilot. We should be on HBO or Netflix. Uh, fall of 2023. Nice. But the TV pilot, we're going to do a world premiere in December. Uh, Honey Lemon series. It's a, it's a series that I wrote, uh, produced that you, all women will probably like fall in love with. That's awesome. I also wrote a book called The Other Side of a Mirror, also talking about a woman's transition. Um, you, you guys would love it. It's like the mixture of Fifty Shades and Gone Girl combined. Mm. So it's called The Other Side of a Mirror. And my Instagram is CK Mulfort, M U L F O R T. Awesome. And I'm going to link everybody's Instagram and how you can follow them and, and find where they are because they all bring such, such different perspectives of their lives and what they do. So thank you everyone for tuning in. And until next time, thank you and see you on the next episode of Diary of an Empath. Mm-hmm.